H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, we are back again in track. So any doubts uh, from the previous session? Uh, if anyone has any, any doubts right now, we can just go through the doubts now and then we can proceed with the class. Okay. So no doubts from anyone? Great. All right, I hope everybody, uh, you are able to see my screen. Uh, I have a question on GIT. Okay. Yeah, what's the question? Uh, yeah, Keith, uh, please go ahead and uh, ask a question. You cannot see replace with... Uh, So you have to right click on the file and say replace with head revision. Yeah, Keith, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll do one thing after this class is over. I'll just uh, look into your PC and we'll see uh, what's, what's wrong with this. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, Madhu, we haven't covered much. I'll be just, we are st uh, still into the basic of the programming. We haven't even covered the classes and all. Uh, just try to follow this, uh, this class. And uh, if you still do not, we'll just have a backup class for you. Okay. All right. So let's start up. In the previous class, we spoke about uh, the loops. Okay, the jump statements, the control statements, the iterations as well. Okay, and uh, I told you that I'll be even showing you uh, the other kind of for loop also. So let us get into the program right now. So let me open a new program here. Okay, I, I believe everybody were uh, are able to check out the uh, projects, right? At least there should not, shouldn't be any problem in checking out uh, the projects. Or still anyone has still any problems in checking out the project? Okay, so okay, Lydia says yes. That that means you have problems or you do not have problems. Okay, all right, great. Uh, and, and Madhu, uh, I'll, I'll tell the admin to even share the videos, previous videos. Uh, you can just even go through that. And if you still have any difficulties, we'll uh, still have a session. Okay, so I'll just talk to the admin guys to send you the videos. Okay, so let's take an example for the for loop again. Uh, for loop example two. Finish. So let me uh, take the previous for loop here and uh, let me, okay, so let me copy this piece and this piece, copy this, come here and just paste it here. Okay. Now, as you, as I said, uh, let's say I'm just going to give you uh, one example here. Uh, end. Okay, I'm going to say here uh, for. Okay, in in the loop, if I say if 
uh, let's say let me keep this index in a local variable here so let me copy this or let me just use it directly if index uh, integer array of that particular index whether it is a 0 1 2 or 3 or doesn't matter if it equals to equals to let's say 6 then come inside this and print this value okay otherwise let's see let's do it in this way if this is the condition then just say continue all right and we have already seen what is the use of a continue right uh, let me even run this program again for you and sh show you what it is. So basically here whenever it sees uh, the value of 6, uh, value of this particular value is uh, 6, then it is going to basically continue and it is going to go to the 7th one. It is going to print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is going to skip this 6th uh, one and it is going to continue with the 7, 8 and 9. Okay. So right click, run as Java application. Okay. So if you can see here, I, I only get as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 is not uh, not coming because this condition satisfied and the moment this condition satisfied I am basically continuing the loop here okay when you say continue from here it goes back to the uh, loop back, loop loop again okay now uh, here if I have let's say I want to say if this particular value okay or let's say let me keep this in another value here let me say here as int uh, current value equals to this one so what i'm doing is i'm basically the moment i loop through i capture that value the index of 0 1 or 2 into the current value okay the same current value i'm going to check it here now i'm saying here if current value equals to equal to 6 i am just going to say sys trace uh, system dot auto print ln and I'm just going to say here uh, continuing the loop. Okay. Now, if I run this, run as Java application. So the moment it sees uh, the value equals to six, it basically prints this and come to this this place. And it goes back to the loop again instead of printing this piece of line. Okay. Now, uh, if I only have a single statement here, okay, let's say let me just copy this or delete it and put it here for the time being. Now, if you can see, I have only one condition here that is a if equals to so and so, and in the in the in the uh, body of this particular block. So I say this is a block because the curly braces starts here and it ends here. Okay. Now, if you have only one condition, you can very well uh, delete the blocks. That means you delete the curly braces here. It is not required. Okay. Now, if I just format, now how do I format uh, the complete uh, application? Now, let's say, what do you mean by formatting here? Let's say I have got for loop here and this one somewhere here, right? And this is somewhere here, right? So nothing is in place right now for me, correct? So I basically copied the example from some, some other place and I just pasted this. And let's say this is thousand line of code. I cannot go back and say, uh, delete this and say tap, 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 right? So what you can do is we can very well right click on this. Uh, <clears throat> you can say uh, control shift F, okay? So if you say control shift control plus shift, plus F, okay? So it is going to format your piece of code here, all right? Now, uh, otherwise you have an option here. Um, where is that? Okay, you can see here on the source, you can say format here also, okay? So if nothing is in place, there are a lot of tabs in a lot of places, then just say right click, source, uh, format. Okay. The moment you say format, everything is going to be in, uh, in a proper order. Now, what do you mean by proper order here? Uh, if you see the first line, this will be this. The indentation will be zero here. I mean, the space will be zero here. The space will be four, four spaces. Here it will be eight spaces. Here it will be eight spaces, and and it goes on and on. Okay. So this is one level under the main class, 
and this is one level under the uh, main method and this is this on uh, the same level as what you have it in the uh, integer array okay so even though if i run this application it doesn't matter uh, i'll be getting the same output run as java application so 1 2 3 4 5 is not there and 7 8 9 but if you have multiple statements after your if condition the statement could be uh, let's say i want to print this one if suppose i'm going to say this end so if i copy and paste this here right now you basically get a compilation issue saying what uh, it says unable to reach code okay because why it is unable to reach the code uh, when it checks for this condition it, it is going to print this and it is basically going to continue continuously okay so it will it will go to here so there is no point in ha in having a piece of code right here okay so these are things which uh, even though if you don't remember things uh, at the time you write your code and you compile it you are going to uh, your compiler is going to give you an error saying that okay you have got an issue in your code okay now what you do in this case uh, just have a curly braces here open and uh, close it there is a uh, block of code and just copy and paste it here okay so what do you write inside this uh, and as i said in the previous class also you cannot write anything after this okay because it's going to be a compilation issue as well okay all right so here uh, i'm saying if current value equals to 6 uh, i'm using a something like continue okay uh, or I, if i say break here right and right click run as uh, java application it is uh, okay let me just remove this if i run this right click run as java application it is only going to print till 1 to 5 because the moment it sees the value as 6 it is i'm using a break here right so when i use a break here it basically uh, you go out of the loop all right okay now let's see one more thing uh, for this for loop i'm going to give a name as outer loop okay so i can give a name to a particular loop as outer loop and i can use it something like this so in specific why we are using this i will even tell you the reason behind this so right click run as java application so it's all the same thing okay i can even use a continue also here and here i'm actually giving a name to the loop here okay this is and i know that this is a kind of a loop here so i'm giving a name to the loop saying a, saying that outer loop column okay the same thing the way you give a name to the class the name to a main method uh, i mean name a name to any of the variables here right so these are the variables so the same thing you give a name to the for loop also so right click run as uh, java application the same same result here right now what happens is uh, at one point of time uh, let's say you let me comment this out and let me say oh, one more loop inside this for int i equals to 0 and uh, i less than 5 i plus plus okay now here i have got one more loop inside this and uh, inside this again i'll be having one more loop let's say okay for let me just copy the same thing here and paste it okay now uh, this is very similar if you can see i've got a compilation issue here why it's saying it is a there is a duplicate variable why it is a duplicate variable already the value of i i have used it in the previous for loop okay so same thing you cannot use it again and again okay now here i can uh, do one thing i can just say uh, the first for okay uh, first inner loop okay i can even give a name to this now let me use a value of j here j j and j <clears throat> okay so my objective here is uh, when i'm using an outer loop and i have got an inner loop i have got an inner inner loop okay 
Now, I'm not even concerned about this. Let's say I've got a condition here. Uh, here, the value of index is you are, you are uh, each and every time you're looping this complete array, the value of the index goes to your current value. Okay. Now, you're not doing any condition here, but here in the for loop. Okay. So, there is a loop inside a loop, right? So, this is a loop inside a uh, inside your outer loop. Okay. So, this one I have named it as first inner loop. Now, again, for each i, now if you can see this, how many times your for loop is going to loop? It is going to loop five times. Okay. Now, how many times this particular loop is going to loop? It is going to loop how many times you have the value here? That is your eight times. Okay. So, sorry, it is your nine times here. So, this is going to loop nine times and this is going to loop uh, five times. Okay. So, altogether, this is going to loop nine into five times. Right, because each time it comes here, it is going to loop this one. Okay, and this is going to loop how many times? It's going to loop uh, your 9 into uh, 5 into 5. Okay, that many times this particular loop is going to loop every time. Okay, now here I've got a condition here. I'm saying uh, if uh, j equals to equals to the current value. Okay, if j equals to equals to the current value, I want to decide, my logic wants to decide uh, whether to uh, break, okay, to your first loop, first inner loop, okay, or to break the complete loop here, okay. Now, let's say if I say break here, what happens? Simply break. And let me... Um, okay, let me just have this here and if you have this here and I've got one more loop here and after this loop I'm having a value as index. So let me just print this value. So this is your from your outer loop. Why this is from your outer loop? Because if you see if I double click on this this particular SOP uh, that is your system dot order printl and basically belongs to belongs to your outer loop okay because this is somewhere related to this one okay now again in your second loop I'm going to have one more system dot order printl and I'm going to print something here and I'm going to say this is your first inner loop okay and let me print the value of your first inner loop as i here Okay, so i value goes here, the uh, current index value goes here. So let me copy this and paste it here. And, uh, and for this loop, again, let me have something as loop here. Okay, and this is your j. So this is your, let me just name it as. Uh, very most inner loop okay so uh, let me just uh, do a break here uh, if the current value equals to and let me keep this value okay let me keep it short and simple here uh, this current value the first time it is one okay sorry uh, yeah first time it is going to be one it is going to come to this loop let me just format this so it is going to come inside this loop and still the value of the current value is 1 here. It is going to loop. Uh, okay, so it is going to loop here. It is going to say uh, the value of i is equals to 0, something here. Okay, now it is going to come here and it is going to loop inside and the value of j, it is 0. Uh, it is not going to break. When it is 0, it is going to print this one, right? Now when it is 1, it is going to break, right? So if you run this program, right click, run as Java application, let me say println and say println here. Say println also here. Okay. Right click run as Java application. Now what basically happens if you see this program? Uh, we go to the very starting here. Now here it says the very most inner loop. Uh, why? Because the first time it came here the index is 0. And uh, the value 
okay this this value will be one for you and it comes to your for loop okay in, uh, the inside for loop and in this again you are checking a particular condition if that condition satisfies uh, and see the j value you are printing it here right because it is it is not it is basically not satisfying this condition it is not breaking out now if you if the, and if you can see the second very uh, very most inner loop the value of very most inner loop of uh, where is that zero okay so it it will still continue unless until you find a value of zero okay so if you see the value of zero here sorry the value of one here it is basically going to break out now the main objective here if you see, now you do not know your your logic may say you hear that which particular loop i want to break whether i want to break this loop or i want to break this loop okay if i simply say here break of outer loop what basically happens if your condition matches here right it jumps to the outer loop directly okay so in this way you can basically control the complete flow even though you have an inner loop also okay so let me just put a breakpoint here and here okay and let me right click debug as java application so what is the value of current a value it is 1 right now and the value of j equals to is 0 here right so it will not meet the condition so when i do an f6 so it basically comes in prints here right so if i keep continuing now second time if you see uh, it checks for this condition and this condition satisfies now let's see what's going to happen right now if i put a breakpoint here right okay now when i did a break of your outer loop f8 right it basically break the complete loop here right so when it uh, let me run it again and show you that so i say right click debug as java application so it comes here first let me save six uh it comes to the first inner loop it comes in the for loop of your inside of uh, inside the for loop uh for loop inside your for loops of the for loop okay so there is three for loops here and if this condition satisfied no it is going to say very most inner loop the second time it comes here now this condition satisfies now what will happen it will basically break through the complete loop because i'm saying break of outer loop okay so for that reason only one time i printed here and there will be no print out here okay when i do an f8 that means you are resume the complete flow it basically breaks here and if you see after this there is nothing here okay if i put a sop here sys out and uh, final statement okay so when i say final statement here so let me run this again uh, run as i'm not debugging it right now java application so it is going to say very most inner loop of zero and say final statement so let me instead of having a break statement let me have a continue statement okay and let's see the difference right now uh, i'll do the same thing right click debug as java application and let's see what's going to happen i'm going to say f6 f6 in the sense go to the next line so it comes here uh, it is not satisfying this condition so it is not even continuing okay so when it satisfy this condition what happens right you saying continuing continue the outer loop when i say continue the outer loop again say it is not going to come to these blocks okay not even uh, it is going to come to this block for loop is directly going to jump to the outer loop here okay so if you see uh, each time it continues it it checks okay now it see the value of 0 1 now if you see keep continuing this right so depend on what condition you have and depending on your condition whether you want to uh, drag your code to any kind of loop here okay so this is the use of your uh, your your this particular statement now if you do not use it you can you cannot uh, control the flow because if you say continue here it will basically continue this particular loop okay but your your uh, main objective is 
if my inner condition satisfies i want to basically jump to the outer loop here okay so i would request you guys to practice this i'm going to check in this file uh, try different combinations and uh, see how these things works okay anyone has any questions now i know there might be some doubts in your mind right now but if you have any questions just please ping me or you can just speak out as well any questions from anyone guys uh, please ping me Yes, I did provide the URL. You didn't uh, attend the last class, Sajid. I mean, uh, today is my first. Class. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, it should not be a problem. I'll be giving you the uh, link. Uh, even let me try pinging you the. So the link will be if you go to a GIT, click on this. So this is the link which I'll be using. Right click, copy. so use this link to just check out the project and if you see the previous video also i'll, I'll request the admin to send you the uh, video so that you can uh, follow that and you can check out the project okay okay so you don't need to plug in anything right for this one uh, so git is inbuilt uh, in your eclipse itself you don't have to plug in anything uh, okay okay, okay. Okay, so there is a question. It's uh, uh, how can we debug the program line by line? Actually, when I'm doing debug, it compile whole program all together, not showing line by line. Okay, uh, line by line. Uh, of uh, for that, what you have to do is you put a breakpoint in the very first place. Okay, if you do not put a breakpoint, even though if you say debug as a Java application, it is very similar to running your uh, normal Java file. Okay, so for that reason. you want to stop your execution at one place okay so just right click on this on the left hand side uh, and say uh, toggle breakpoint okay or you can just double click on that particular line on the left left of your numbers and if your numbers are not enabled right click and just say uh, show line numbers okay if it is something like this come to the extreme end of your editor and right click and say show line number okay and put a debug point at the very first place and from there when you say debug as java application it is going to stop there okay once it stops uh then from there you can basically say <coughs> run and if you there see there a lot of options step over or return we'll see a couple of things later and you have got resume also uh f6 is something you want to go line by line F5 is something you want to go inside this. I'll show you later, at, not at this point of time. And F8 is something you want to resume. A resume in the sense, let's say, let's talk about F6 now. So when I say F6, it goes on and on, okay? And the unless until your flow goes completes, it goes on and on. Now, if you want to resume it, I mean, you want to say, I want to uh, continue the flow. I don't want to uh, use any debug point. Just say F8, okay? The moment you say F8. it basically prints all, all the things whatever you want and it goes through okay that is connection we have to watch it all right uh okay i'm going to check in this file now and uh, if you guys have, have any questions uh, i think it answered your question right okay now let me just check in this file as i said uh, right click on the file i'm going to right click on the file as you can see it's a new file and on the left hand side if you can see it's there is a question mark out here okay that means it's a new file for me and there are no question marks for the other files and that means these are all uh, existing files and it is already been committed so right click uh, team 
commit. Uh, <coughs> I can give any comments here. I can just say for loop with a name. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, just second uh, commit and push. So you guys are ready to check out the uh, for the the file right now. And if I do any changes in the existing file, as you can see, if I just save this right now, on the right hand side I see something like a yeah, uh, greater than symbol. Okay, that means you have done some modification to the file. Just check in that file. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Let's move on. So these uh, till now, what we have seen is not at all Java. Okay, mainly we saw if you learn any kind of programming language, these are the minimal things you you have to understand and you have to learn. Apart from uh, creating all this class and stuff, uh, we haven't talked about any of these things in particular. But we were only talking about all the uh, conditions inside your main method, okay? And these are these kind of conditions will be common in a lot of uh, programming language, okay? Uh, now, once we have learned this, let's start uh, learning something else apart from uh, this. Uh, what are the basic syntaxes to follow? Now, in Java, we have to follow a couple of syntaxes. As you can see, uh, Java is case sensitive. Uh, it means uh, if you have something like int hello, okay, I can give a name as hello, and even I can say int hello, okay. So these two are different entirely, okay. Hello is different, and h hello with your capital letter is different, okay. And uh, before that, let me even tell you one more thing, uh, which I think I have missed out in the previous classes. So let me go back to the for loop here okay and let me say uh, int my array equals to new of of file okay uh, now I okay let me copy this and create a new file for you. Right click new class uh, initial value of a variable. And if you if you all see this, how I'm naming this class, uh, I could have very well told something like. Uh, I N I T I A L value V as in small, okay, of a variable, right? Now I'm basically, if you see this, is somebody will understand? Okay, this is kind of a single, uh, uh, single word itself, okay? Now in order to differentiate that, what you do is I say initial value V as in capital O as in capital. V as in capital. Okay, so this is the kind of a naming construct you have to follow whenever you write, whenever you create a class in Java. Okay, so always the first letter should be capital. Okay, and the the following letters uh, should be a capital also. Okay, the following words and there should not be any spaces as you know between the uh, name of the classes. Okay, so let me come here and uh, and say int i equals to new of int of 5 okay now i'll say int i of uh, 0 equals to 5 right now if i just say sys trace and want to print the value of the value i of 0 okay i'm going to get the value of i of 0 is 5 run as Java application okay I get the value is 5 here so let me even remove this delete 
remove. All right. Now, what did I do here? I just removed the value. Uh, okay, I just removed the string out here, and I just printed i of zero. Now, what will happen if I uh, print the value of i of one? Right? Can can you guys uh, ping me in the chat? What could be the value of i of one here? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I want everyone to participate in this and just ping me. Good, okay. I just got an answer error. I'm getting answer as zero. I'm getting answer as null. Uh, okay, I'm even getting answer as null again. I want everyone to participate, uh, folks. I see very few answers right now. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I see a lot of other folks. Please uh, ping anything uh, in, in the chat. Anything in the sense to be a bit relevant, okay? It prints some number for array index. Yeah, it prints some number, okay? But what's that number I'm talking about? Um, okay, uh, okay. I, 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 I see one answer saying uh, variable not defined, okay? And uh, variable not defined, you will find those informations basically in your JavaScript, okay? Uh, all right. Okay. 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 All right. So let me give the answer here. So let's let me just run this application and show you the answer. Right click run as Java application. Now what is the value here? It is zero. Okay. So the 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 folks who has told zero a, a very big round of applause for those guys. Uh, okay. The reason is. Uh, for any kind of integer, okay, integer numbers, uh, you'll be getting the default value, okay? The default value for any kind of integers is your zero, all right? So even though if I do not initialize, what do you mean by initialize? When I say int uh, j equals to 20, that means I have initialized the value of j to 20, okay? So if I just say sys, uh, sys out and say j here, so I'm expected uh, the value of J should be 20. Run as Java application. Okay. Now, what if I do not give the value anything? So that is the place wherein we are talking about right now. Okay. Now, if you do not give any value somewhere here, uh, you're going to get a compilation issue. Basically, it says that uh, the local variable may not have been initialized. Uh, you will even talk about these things uh, in the latest, later session. Basically, yes, if it is a local variable, we'll even talk about right now what is a local variable, what is a instance variable also. So just uh, stay tuned as well. So here, uh, as this is this particular variable is inside your main method. So this is known as your local variable. OK, now if I just put this here somewhere, OK, and uh, I have to give something as static. OK, just for now, don't even think about that. So if I give this value of uh, static int j. I do not initialize anything. If I initialize to 90, I'll be getting the value inside here something as 90, run as Java application, okay? Now, if I do not initialize anything, I'll be getting the default value. Right click, run as Java application, okay? So that is what I'll be getting. So don't even think about uh, this right now. Just think nothing is here. I will, we'll be having a, a brief discussion on what is a static, okay? All right, uh, so this is all about your initial value and uh, whatnot, okay? So let me even check in this. Okay, so I'm gonna say here this program talks about the initial value of a variable. Okay, I'm going to check in this uh, later, uh, not now. All right, let's move on now. Okay, as I said, Java is case sensitive. Uh, the reason I have already told you, uh, hello, H in small is different as hello uh, H in caps. Okay, 
class name should be in upper case upper case uh, upper case in the sense when i say hello world h should be uh, upper case and w should be in upper case okay that's what it is a uh, method name should be cam camel case uh, we'll talk about this uh, at, at later point uh, when we speak about the methods basically uh, just to give you a short note if i say something like uh, uh, void okay we'll talk about void also print me i can say print me like this also okay but as i said we should use some camel case i should say here print m as in capital okay so this is what it says a camel case basically and then uh, file name and the program name should be the same uh, what do you mean by file name and the program name should be same uh, here if you see the file name is uh, hello world okay and the the class name is hello world now what if i say hello world 2 right uh, if you see i just when i say let's say hello world apart from that i just say hi world now when you see uh the class name is hello world and the name sorry the class name is hi world and actually the name of the file is hello world right so there's there is a mismatch right now for that reason you basically get a compilation issue right it says the public type hi world must be defined in its own file right so that means i have to again create a new file and put the uh, hi world in that right now if i remove this i'm okay right now tell me uh, i'll tell you one thing i can have multiple class files in a single java file itself okay so here in this case if i say let me just toggle the name here public class hello world or oh, let me do one thing control z and create a new file new class multiple class file okay now i can say here class uh my first file okay i can have uh something like my second file and what not okay now if you can see here i do not even have any compilation compilation issues everything should go fine even if i say sys trace okay and right click run as uh, java application everything goes fine okay but the moment i add one more public something pub lic okay i basically get a compilation issue what i can do i can just copy this file and put it in another file with the same name here right but if you tend to write the same class file i mean you, if you want to have one more class file in the same class then you have to spec you do not have to specify any uh public in front of it okay so you can just simply say it as class my first class class my my second class okay so you are free to do this as well okay uh so this is what it is uh the file name and the program name should be the same <clears throat> this is the basic syntax you need to follow whenever you you write your java classes and your apis and uh, java identifiers uh, identifier should always begin with a letter a to z or a to z uh, in small uh, you can use a uh, currency character or an underscore as well okay uh, you uh, keywords cannot be uh, used as an identifier what it means let's see one by one or uh, let me take the same example here so i can say int uh, hello right equals to 10 i cannot i can even say underscore hello i can even say okay i can say um uh, underscore hello i can even say dollar but i cannot use something <coughs> like this 1 2 3 okay it cannot start with a, a special character or it cannot start with a numbers all right so this is what you have if you can see uh, which are legal and these are all illegal characters you can you not even have a as a certain kind of special characters also okay so and it says keywords cannot be used as an identifier uh, 
as I said, these are the identifier, hello, underscore hello, and stuff and all. And in, uh, as you know, byte is a keyword, right? I mean, integer, int, byte, short, long, those are all keywords. And even if you can see, public is also a keyword, right? So we, even we spoke about, uh, okay. Uh, so here I cannot say something like byte. Okay, it will basically give me a compilation issue. It says syntax error byte invalid variable declare uh, invalid uh, present uh, variable basically. Okay, even I cannot declare any kind of well, let's say I cannot say as public, right? Because these are all keywords for me. Uh, yes, we we discussed that in the uh, second class. So any of the keywords you cannot use it as a identifier. So this cannot okay keywords cannot be used as an identifier okay so let us see other other things also uh, uh, in java we, when we uh, when we talk about modifiers we'll talk about uh, these modifiers down uh, down the line also so to modify class and uh, method uh, methods java uh, modifiers are required uh, we have something like access modifiers that is your public private and protected will which we'll see and this is just an heads up to you on <coughs> what all things we have it and we have something like a non access modifiers also wherein we have something like uh, final abstract strict ft fp and these things okay so mainly we'll concentrate uh, we'll we'll check what uh, your access modifiers are and what is your non access modifiers are Okay, so and here as I was talking about in the, uh, in the previous example, there are three type of variables in Java. One is your local variable, one is your class variable, and the other one is your uh, instance variable. Okay, now in short, if you see, uh, I have used local variables. Okay, so what are local variables here? My hello is a local variable because it is inside a method. Okay, if I say hello outside here, Okay, so this is basically an instance variable for me. We'll see in this, uh, the, we'll see all these things in details also. So no worries, even though if you do not understand things, things right now. Okay, now why it is instance variable? Because this I have declared inside the class itself, but this is your local variable because this I have declared inside a method. Now, why, what is a method? Anything uh, you have a name with a uh, open open bracket and a close bracket, okay, and not not a curly bracket, and uh, you have something in that, and you if you declare a variable inside that, that is your local variable, and if I say something as hello again, okay, now as of now this is your instance variable because if you can see the instance variable hello and instance variable hello again it's all the same type right it's of type integer this is also an integer but if i add static in front of that it basically becomes your class variable okay so this is your instance variable this is your class variable and this is your local variable So we'll see what is the difference between your local variable, what is the difference between your uh, class variable, and what is the difference, uh, what is what is your instance variables when we start learning your object concepts. Okay. Uh, and this is a kind of a data type uh, which we I think I should uh, talk about this in the later class. Uh, once we finish up the uh, the class concept, I'll, I'll even give you an example. What is an enum? and where to use this enum and how to use it as well, okay? So, and even I have spoken about this, what is a comment in Java, right? So in the next class, we'll, we'll start introducing what is a class and how to write a class and what are the uh, objective of writing a class and those information we'll see in the next class, okay? So I don't want to start right now because I just have five minutes of time, right? So I don't want to start up right now, so we'll, we'll continue it tomorrow. So any questions till now, uh, folks, if you have any questions, please ping me what is strict FT. 
uh, stick FT, it, it's kind of a <clears throat> keyboard. We use it uh, basically for some kind of calculation, uh, which we'll see. I'll give you some kind of examples on that. Okay, so no worries. This will be very early to uh, use those kind of, I mean, explain you those things. Okay. Jairam, mm -hmm. this is Lydia. Yeah, hi Lydia. Um, do we do we have class on Friday? Uh, classes on Friday. Yes, we'll be having classes on Friday. Um, okay. 18th. This Friday is Good Friday. Do you? Oh, this Friday is Good Friday. Uh, we'll do one thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an update tomorrow. Uh, if okay. every one of you are okay, uh, we'll just take an off on that day. Even let me talk to the admin guys. Okay. okay. So I'll let you know on that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a nice, nice evening. Uh, can we define private classes as second class instead of public? Yeah, these things we'll discuss about in the later classes, Harpreet. So just stay tuned. Okay. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I would like to know, like, can we get these templates? Which all templates? Uh, um, the one which you are teaching now? Yeah, I'll be sending you those PPTs uh, for sure, okay? Uh, once when I start up the classes, uh, uh, we'll be discussing about the classes and all. Uh, from there, I'll start uh, sending you all the PPTs, okay? Okay, so not, not those, the back one, the previous class templates we can't get it. Uh, see, this is just a template. Uh, I'll give you the previous class recording. I'll talk to the admin guys, or if you can just uh, shoot out an email. Uh, to uh, to the admin guys or even I'll shoot out an email to them right away to send you the uh, the videos okay just go through the, those videos okay yeah we got the videos uh -huh. the slides PPT slide okay yes yeah, slides I'll be sending it uh, very soon okay okay thank you yep sure yeah and uh, I, I would request everyone to shoot out uh, just ping me their email IDs uh, if anyone has missed out. I'll be sending some programs to you if you can uh, uh, practice those programs. Uh, it'll be great enough. Okay. So please uh, ping me your respective email IDs again. Uh, or otherwise, if you can shoot out an email to jram.h2k infosys at gmail.com. Okay. I would request you can uh, send out an email to this right away. Okay. Um, Jairam, this is Shiny. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh uh, have you sent any um, any um, materials or anything up in the previous from the previous classes? Are you talking about the videos? Uh, not the videos like um, PPTs or uh, no PPTs. I haven't I haven't sent it across anything. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll share my email ID. Yeah, you. please. Yep. Uh, you can do one thing. You can just ping me. I mean, uh, send out an email to the one which I pinged you. That is a jram dot h two k infosys at gmail dot com. So I pinged okay. to ping in the comment chat. So instead of uh, me copying your email IDs, so please shoot out an email, uh, just a test email. Okay. Yeah, uh, guys, if you have no questions, then we can uh, just wind up the session. Uh, I think Keith has got some issues uh, with his Eclipse. Uh, I'll just try to sort out his problems. Uh, I have one more question. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the, the video that uh, H2K have shared with us. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like very clear. It's a very blurred vision. Is that the uh, same with everyone? Or? Yeah, no, actually the problem is there was some problem with uh, those those recordings. And what okay. we are doing is right now, we'll, you'll be getting a proper recording from now. H2K emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.